Okay, so welcome everyone. We're going to get straight on to our presentation today, all about using LinkedIn more strategically. So I'm going to start to share my screen and I should be able to see. Let's go right to the start. Okay, so we're going to be talking all about how to use LinkedIn more strategically for our next career move. So we're going to get straight into it today. And then any questions, you can obviously get in touch with me afterwards and ask them as well. So when we think about using LinkedIn more strategically, there I shared in a previous video, and I've just put it at the bottom of this screen as well, um, all about how to get the most from LinkedIn. Look at that video first if you've never used LinkedIn before, if you want to learn some of the basics, okay? But as I shared in that video and I've talked about before, LinkedIn is such a popular social media platform to use, especially when we're looking for our next job. So I've put some of the stats up here. LinkedIn has over 900 million users worldwide. Um, we've got 65 million business decision makers are actually on LinkedIn and 58.4 million companies are also listed on there. And also, you know, eight people on average are hired each minute on LinkedIn. So it's such a good place to be. And as I've said here, it's also free. So I really recommend LinkedIn for people when they're starting to think about the next career move as well. So what I'm going to be doing today, I thought it'd be easier to split this into three parts. So when we think about how we can use LinkedIn more strategically, we're going to talk about whether you're actively seeking whether you're more passive, but you're very focused still, or whether you're playing the long game. And that's going to make a bit of sense as we go through this. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So actively seeking. So this is if you are really ready for your next job now, okay? You want to be looking for that next job. And I've said here, you know, you're going to be active, but also the part of this is you've got to be consistent, but you want to be strategic. You don't want to spend all your time looking for jobs. So you want to have a strategy to it, but you do need to be showing up consistent, consistently, especially if you're using LinkedIn. And I'm going to explain that more now. So when we think about actively seeking, if that's you and if you're actively seeking jobs now, this is how you can use LinkedIn. So first of all, you can search for jobs and you can use filters and you can also apply on LinkedIn directly. And this is really good because when you find jobs on LinkedIn, you can either find that company's website and still go through the normal channel of finding the job on the website and applying, or on a lot of, a lot of jobs on LinkedIn, they have something called easy apply. And that literally means you find the job, you're going to click on easy apply, and it will just ask for your details and you can upload your CV. So it's a really easy way. And that's, it's quite rare to be able to just get straight to the recruiter or the decision maker. And that's what LinkedIn allows you. I'm going to go through, there's no gatekeepers to get through. And all of these things I'm telling you about in a minute, I'm going to bring up my LinkedIn profile and show you how to do it. I'm just giving you the kind of explanation now. Another way if you're actively seeking is you can use hashtags. OK, so I've given an example of some hashtags you might want to search. So if you typed in, you know, hashtag jobs, hashtag recruiting, it will bring up any jobs and then you can gain, you can filter it. So by location or maybe by job title or by salary, etc. OK, and with this, if you're also using hashtags and that's another thing I'm going to explain, less is more. So don't get, have like a 10 hashtags, three to five max on your own posts. If you want to put in, you know, that you're looking for work, three to five is normally much more effective. OK, and again, I'm going to show you this in a minute. And then the other thing you can do if you're actively seeking is you, you can also follow companies or your ideal business. So say, for example, you've always wanted to work for a certain company. You can actually find them on LinkedIn and then you can start to follow them. And then you can also ask to see, you can um, change it to get job alerts. So anytime that this company posts a job, you're going to be the first to know. Okay, so it's a really good way. So any companies you're interested in, maybe you've always wanted to work at a certain place, you, or maybe there's a certain recruiter you want to get to know. You can again follow their page and you're going to hear about these opportunities first. OK, now with all of these things I've put at the bottom of here, remember that you need to make yourself accessible and make it really clear for a recruiter how they can get in touch with you. So if you've got settings on your LinkedIn that make it really hard for them to get in touch with you or you don't share your email address, then it's going to be really hard for them to get in touch. Then it's not going to bother. So make sure you've got an email address that's visible. Make sure you are applying. They can find those contact details for you. Maybe it's on your profile. Or maybe it's on your about section. It's got your email, maybe your phone number if you're happy for that as well. But make it easy for them to get in touch with you. 
Okay, so that is the actively seeking. And like I said, in a minute, I'm going to bring up my LinkedIn and show you that. Okay, so now when we come on to the second part, so maybe this is more passive and focused and maybe for people who aren't actively looking right now, but maybe you know your job's coming to an end in six months or you've been thinking about changing roles for a while or your circumstances are going to be changing. This might be used. You're not needing it immediately, but you do want to start considering your next job. Okay, so if that is you, there's three things I'd recommend here. So the first thing is have a fully optimized LinkedIn profile. And the reason I say this is because this is how you will show up for recruiters when they're searching for people. Okay, and then you allow them to come to you. So the first thing I've said is watch that video I mentioned. If you're on my YouTube channel, you can see it on there. And it's about how to have an optimized LinkedIn profile. So what I mean when I say that is you've got a picture You've got a summary section, you've got a buy, you've got an about section, you've got your information filled in. Because if you don't have a fully complete profile, you don't show up in a lot of search results. So it's really important that you spend some time getting your LinkedIn profile up and ready. Okay, and also that you're connecting with people, you can use keywords again. So I'm going to show you this, but when you are, say you want to apply for a job in HR, and specifically in recruitment, let's say, when maybe you've looked at jobs out there or you just know some keywords that recruiters would use, you can make sure that's in your profile, whether it's in your about section or in your bio, which is the bit that people see when they click on you, those, that first couple of sentences next to your name. So I might want to put in there something about recruiting or resourcing. I might want to put in there about hiring, just keywords that might then attract me to those recruiters. OK, so you can use these keywords as well. Also, pay attention to your recommendations and endorsements. And I'm going to show you this in a minute. But a lot of people just leave this bit out. But again, if I'm a recruiter and I'm looking for people to, for this particular job, if I can see two candidates and one's been recommended and they've had endorsements for the skills and this other person's had none, it could sway me a bit more to the person who I can see clearly has done that job and other people have recognized it. So don't ignore this part. And again, I'm going to show you how you can do this. You can also join relevant LinkedIn groups. So again, say if I was going for a job in HR, I might find other LinkedIn groups that talk about HR, that talk about resourcing or recruitment. And I can, you know, just see what other people are talking about. So it keeps me really current in that area. Um, so if I do go for an interview, I can talk about it, but you never know what people might share in that group. They might even say, hey guys, I know we're looking for somebody at our company soon in HR. If you're interested or you know anyone, could you let me know? So again, it's just about expanding your network. OK, now and, and so you can see with this, it's not immediate. You're not getting an immediate return on the um, on your work you're putting in, but it's building it up. OK, so LinkedIn can have um, you can get immediate kind of the active seeking. You can get more immediate results. This is more of a medium result that you're waiting for. OK, another thing you can do is ensure you're open to work settings are on. I'm not going to talk too much about this. I'm going to actually show you. But all this essentially does is it tells people that you are actively looking for work. And if you don't want everyone to know on LinkedIn, you can just set it up so only recruiters know. So again, it just makes it really easy for them. They're going to have different, um, when recruiters are on LinkedIn, they will be able to just click a filter that only shows them people that have got this setting on, that they're open to work. So it just saves them time as well. And then finally, be active. Be posting on LinkedIn. This sounds really obvious, but a lot of times people just use it to look for jobs and they're not giving anything back. They take, take, take and never give. So, you know, make sure you're also adding value to this platform. You know, whether it's sharing original content, so you share your own post or you're sharing other people's posts, liking, you know, if you think about all social media, it's reciprocal. You know, it's social, it's called social. So we should, should be sociable on there. So really do this, really show up on LinkedIn, but also show up as you are today. Talk about things that are important to you. It hasn't all got to be about work. But again, if I'm a recruiter and I look, want to get to know you, I can go on your profile and I can really get a feel for that. OK, and then even the company, maybe if it's the hiring manager, they can go on and have a look at you. So it's really important that you're on there as well. And I'm not talking about three hours a day. It might just be 10 minutes every day or it might be 15 minutes, three times a week. But be consistent and really make this part of your, your, your um, schedule in the week if you are starting to think about your next career move. OK, and then coming on to the final part, playing the long game. So this might be where you're really happy in your current role, but you just want to keep your career options open. You just want to know what's out there. 
Okay, so this is like that long, long term result, and um, you're going to get. It's going to take a while to get the kind of um, what's the word? Kind of results, I suppose, from you putting in that work. So with this network. OK, and I put it, don't be needy, don't be sleazy, don't be grass, but you haven't got to be like trying to connect with everyone and going on coffee dates with everyone. Not that at all. But do get out there. Do start to meet people. OK, and when you meet people, you can also tell them that you're looking. You can take action. So, you know, it might be once you start to meet people again, I'm going to use the HR example. Let's say that I was playing the long game. I don't need to get a job in HR right now, but I'm just keeping my options open. Maybe I've met an HR recruiter. What's stopping me taking action? Okay, and one of the actions might be, what's well, not on this bit here, sorry, that I want to, you know, arrange a coffee date with them virtually. Or it might be that I just find out, oh, they're in Cardiff and I'm in Cardiff. So, hey, if you're ever nearby, let's let's meet for a cup of tea. I'm just taking some action. Or it might be that I just say to them, look, I'm really happy where I am now. But I am thinking in the years time, I might start to be looking. Could it be possible we stay in touch? Okay, so you're not just meeting them, you're actually giving a bit of information as well, as well about why you want to stay in touch with them. Find people, okay? I'm going to show you this in a minute. But also, you know, think about, you know, friends, family, etc. that you, you know, you, you know, because you don't know who they know. Tell them, I'm thinking about, you know, I want to get into this different industry. I've always worked in HR, but I've always been interested in the film industry. I'm just starting to, you know, see what's out there. If you know anyone, can you let me know? So you can also find people on LinkedIn, very much like Facebook, you know, find people you used to go to school with. It's very similar on LinkedIn. So you can also find people on LinkedIn, okay, and keep those conversations open. And you can also look at your first degree connections on LinkedIn to increase your connections. And I'm going to show you this in a minute, but what this means is on LinkedIn, you'll have first degree connection, second, third. All that literally means is second degree would be somebody that, let's say I've got a first degree connection with my husband, Andrew, but he has got another connection and I'm not connected with them. So they're a second connection to me. So when I go on all my first, first degree connections, I can then ask to connect with his second degree connections, okay, if they're relevant for me. So not only does that increase my connections, but again, it's expanding who I know. And you can ask to connect up to 100 people a week on LinkedIn. So it's a really good way to increase those connections. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to come on to bringing my LinkedIn profile on now. If you do want to, I'm just going to move my little face here if I can, just so you can use that QR code if you want to. That's my LinkedIn profile. So if you want to right now, join me and do it interactively with me. This is my LinkedIn um, profile on the QR code. I've just put my website there and also my YouTube channel. So again, if you want to watch that previous video, it's on both those places, along with other resources that can help you as well. So I am going to stop sharing this screen right now and I'm going to bring up my LinkedIn profile. Hopefully this is going to work okay. Wait, let me share my LinkedIn profile. I'm gonna move my screen right back up here again. Okay, so when we are on LinkedIn, I'm going to bring up my profile right here. Okay, hopefully you can see that now. Okay, so all the things that I've just talked about, I'm going to show you how to actually do them now. So if you are, let me come into here, looking for a job, okay? So you're searching for a job. The first thing you can do is go in along here. You can see at the top, on the top bar, jobs. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and type in jobs. And it might bring up some of the already recommended for you if you've searched for jobs recently or you've got alerts on. But I'm just going to, for this, you can type in the job you're looking for, or you can type it in by location, you can type it in um, by maybe the title, the date it was posted, etc. But for the sake of today, I'm just going to put in HR assistant. Okay, maybe that's the job I'm looking for. I think that's what I want to be doing. Okay, and it's going to bring up all the HR assistant roles. So you can now filter it. Okay, so you can see here, filters. So you might want to do it by the date it was posted. I only want to apply for recent jobs that have been posted. It might be by the salary, it's got to be at least X amount of salary. Or it might be you want to know whether it's on site or whether you've got to go into the, um, whether you can work remotely. You can also here make it more specific. So again, I'm in Cardiff, so let's say I'm gonna put in Cardiff, Wales. So again, it's gonna filter that down. So there were 6,000 results, now we're down to 44, okay? So you can see, you can really filter this information. 
And again, I'm going to just do, I want to find one that's got this. I probably can't find one now. You'll see what I okay, Here we go. Here's one here. Okay, so HR business support recruitment. And can you see here, it tells me about the job, but I also can do easy apply. Okay, so I can message the hiring person directly or I can just apply straight away. I can even go on this company's website and find the job and do it that way. But if I go on easy apply, it's got my details here and I can just upload my CV. Okay, so that's a way of getting straight to the recruiter without any other gatekeepers. And that's quite rare to have. So it's a really good feature of LinkedIn to be able to do that. Another thing I can do, I'm going to come out of jobs altogether. In my search, do you remember I said the second thing if you're actively seeking is hashtags. So I could use hashtags here. So I might put hashtag jobs. Maybe that's the hashtag I want to do. Okay. Or job search. Let's use job search. So anyone who's used that hashtag is going to come up now. Okay. All of these are going to come up. And I might even want to follow that hashtag. So anytime there's a job search that comes up, I can follow that. Another way of using it, so this is very much about searching for people who have used that hashtag. I might want to use that hashtag. So let's say I've just been made redundant and I'm looking for a job. I might start a post, okay? And I put in here, you know, oh, I've just been recently made redundant, you know, really excited about the next um, part of my journey. I'm ideally looking for jobs in HR. If you know anyone, please get in touch. I always think connections are best, something like that. And then I can use hashtags. Remember I said three to five max and I can type them in. So you can see it's already put in job search here. I might want to put in jobs. I might want to put into now hiring. Okay. Now you can also, when you do hashtags, you can see what's popular. Can you see as I typed in, so let me put in job. As I start to type, the ones that are coming up are popular ones. Okay. So if I put in jobs here, you can see which ones are coming up. But let's say if I make it a bit more specific, jobs for Lucy, can you say there's nothing? <laughs> so that's not a popular hashtag to use. So you try and find ones that people are using. Okay. And you can put three to five in. And that's another way you're using hashtags to find so people can find you. Recruiters who put in the hashtag, just like you did when you were searching, they can also search using hashtags and you would come up. Okay. So that's how we use hashtags. And then the other part when we're actively seeking is when we've got a company, maybe we've got a company, mom. remember I said, you can also follow them. So again, go into your search. I've always wanted to work for WWF. It'd be a great place to work. So let's put that in. Let's pretend that's who you want to work for. So can you see here, you can follow the company. So all you would do is click follow and you're now following them. What that means is that whenever they post things, it's going to come up in your feed. It's going to come up on your homepage. Now you can also look at people who work there. So that's another way you might want to look at all the people that work at WWF and connect with them. OK, so straight away, you now can you see what I said about connections? I'm going to come on to it in a minute, but this person's a second connection. So we obviously have some first connections in common, but we've, she's a second connection. So if I connect with her and she accepts, we become a first connection. OK, so that's another way. So, again, if maybe within WWF, they might have a refer a friend scheme. So they might have jobs and say, hey, if you know anyone, you get £100 for bringing them into the company. And let's say this lady, Louise, posts about it and your first connection with her, you're going to hear about that job. OK, she might also talk about the company a bit, about what it's like to work there. So, again, you're getting some inside information. And you really get a feel for it. Jobs. You can also see all their jobs here. Can you see them? All the jobs that they've got within the company. And again, what you can do, if I go on WWS page, okay, so hopefully you can see this, so it's coming up, and I go on jobs. My computer's a little bit slow this morning. If I go on to jobs here, no, it's not wanting to do it. Let me go on to about. Okay, it's not doing it for me right now. When you go on to, oh, here we go. When you go on to jobs, can you see it's come up? I can create a job alert. Can you see here where I'm collect clicking? So I create a job alert. I can tell them what kind of job I'm looking for, maybe the country I'm in, um, anything else that's important. Is it remote, hybrid, on site, anything at all? And I can create a job alert. What that then means is anytime they post a job that meets my criteria, it's going to come up in my notifications. And you can also, just like you can with Facebook and Instagram, and you can get notifications so they alert you through your email or your phone number, you can set it up. So again, 
when job alerts come up, I might get an email to say, hey, WWF, I've just posted about this job you might be interested in. So again, I'm getting to find out about it first. So they are all the things that I would say you do for actively seeking. So we're going to search for jobs directly. We can search through a company. We can get to know the people at that company. We've got a dream company we want to work for. Also, when I clicked in WWF, I don't know if you saw, I'll show you again. And it might be because I'm really interested. I, you know, I'd love to work with animals, let's say, and that's really important to me. It also then brings up other similar types of organizations. So here, Wildlife Conservation Society, maybe I want to follow them as well. Okay, so I, I never wanted to work for them, but actually maybe they do similar work. So again, it's going to give up, it's going to bring up other things and other companies that might be of interest. Okay, and then the other thing with actively seeking is using those hashtags, whether you search for them or you put them in your own post. Okay, so that is the actively seeking part. So if you remember the second part I talked about was passive and focused. So if we are looking for jobs, but we're more of a passive search, we don't need something immediately, this is what you can start to do. So if you remember, the first thing I said is optimize your LinkedIn profile. So here's my profile. And again, I'm not going to go through this. I've got, a, I've got a video already talking about it, so I'm not going to repeat everything in that video. Please go back and watch it. But this is what I mean by the profile. So having an up-to-date picture, having a banner, having information, so your name, a bit about what you do. This bit is the most important part because this is where a recruiter, they've got just a few seconds to look at you. They're making a decision about whether you're the right person for this role to so tell them a bit about you. This is why I said you can even use keywords that align to that job description or the job you're looking for if you want to. But be a bit different. Don't just use the generic buzzwords like, you know, we've got strategic, we've got expert, passionate, like it's kind of given they're going to expect you to be passionate, they're going to expect you to be an expert in your field. So in here, you really want to be shown why you're different, okay? And make it relevant maybe to the job you're looking for or the industry. And you can keep changing this, by the way. It's not like you can only do it once, okay? So put in here what you want to say. Um, also, as we're going through our profile, so that's the first bit. You can also, can you see here, you've got your contact details as well. So remember I said, make it easy for them to contact you. If a recruiter wanted to contact me, they could just go straight onto my contact details and it's got my email and my phone number. So I've made it really easy for them. Keep going down though, the about section. Okay, so make sure you put in there a bit about you. Okay, and you can also see, this is my about section. I put in here some of the things I'm known for. So again, you might want to do something similar. Happy for you to go into my profile and use it as a template for yourself as well. So I can tell them a bit more about me. Again, I can put all my experience in here. So they've got an online CV for them so they can make decisions about whether I'm the right fit for that role. And this is about, I said, people don't spend time on the skills and your recommendations, okay? So when it comes to skills, again, let's say, Mine are more around coaching these days, but when I was in HR, my skills might have been more around talent management. Um, it might have been about um, culture. It could have been about um, employee relations, employee benefits, etc. I can put the skill and I want people to endorse me for. So you click plus and you can type in the skill. So let's say it was nothing to do with HR. Actually, I wanted a job in quality. I might type it in compliance there. OK, and it will come up with different types of compliant and then I can save it. Okay, I'm not going to put that because I might confuse things, but you see what I mean. You put in the skill you want people to endorse you for. OK, and then people can start endorsing you. Now, people aren't going to just always be ready looking to endorse you for skills. So you might have to ask some people. So what you can do, there's two ways you could do this. You could just directly ask people, say, hey, look, I'm updating my profile. We worked together before. I'm really looking to get back into HR. So could you endorse me for these skills? It's on my LinkedIn profile. Yeah, sure. I will do that for you. Okay. That's one way. Another way is you might go out and endorse somebody. So let's say I wanted to get you to endorse me for um, employee benefits and employee resourcing. And I might then, I'm going to keep using my husband as an example. I might say to him, I might go out and endorse him for some of his skills within his company and his, sorry, his role. And what would happen then, when I endorse him for some of his skills, then he will get a notification saying, Lucy Clemenson Mills has endorsed you for these skills, okay? And you can then follow that up and say, hey, I don't know if you noticed I endorsed you, could you endorse me back? Or he might just off his own back, just endorse you, like to return the favor, okay? So it's very reciprocal LinkedIn. So there's two ways you can do it. Ask directly for people to endorse you, or you go out and endorse them, and then they can endorse you back, 
Okay, and when they endorse you, you can see what it looks like here. So career coaching, nine people have endorsed me for career coaching. So literally they've gone on and endorsed me for that. Make sure it only shows relevant skills. I had to do this recently. I had 47 skills from my previous role that weren't relevant to what I do now. So make sure they're actually relevant. So can you see here, it talks about human resources because that's still relevant to what I do. Coaching, career development. I've got here about leadership, performance management. So they're all relevant, but I also had some that weren't relevant, okay? So I took those off. So make sure your skills that are on here are relevant to either what you do now or what you're hoping to do in your next job. Okay, so that is the skills section. I'm gonna come out with here because just under skills, and why this is important, just to make it really clear, companies, recruiters will use this when they're looking for skills. If they wanna find a career coach, if they type in career coach, I can then come up because it's one of my skills. So this is why it's really important to have your skills there. And then also recommendations. Again, what a great thing. You can have people that recommend you. And I'm a recruiter and I'm looking at five people. I'm going to look at which ones have got recommendations. That might really help me decide which one I'm going to speak with first because I get a real feel for that person. So you can see here the recommendations that are received. I've got eight, uh, 10 recommendations. Okay, so there's eight more there. Or... You can also give recommendations, okay? How you do this then, you can ask for a recommendation or you can give here. Can you see that? So again, very similar to what we did with skills. I can either ask people directly, could you recommend me? We work together. When you start to ask for a recommendation, it will say, how do you know this person? When did you work together? It might be that you didn't work together, but it's more personal, or it might be a business where you know them. So you can ask directly for a recommendation. You could also give them a recommendation first and then ask them to return the favor. Or you don't need to do it through LinkedIn. You could just ask a mate in person to say, hey, I'm trying to update my LinkedIn profile. Could you give me a recommendation for when we work together? And then they can go into your profile. OK, but again, it's just about starting to really optimize your LinkedIn profile. OK, and again, you can put in courses here and anything else. Any of your interests as well. So again, if I wanted to work with WWF, you know, you see one of my causes, one of the first things I say that I'm interested in is animal welfare. So again, it's just that, you know, you can see that my what I'm saying I am about is true and you can see it in my profile. So it all kind of matches. Okay, so that is how you optimize your LinkedIn profile. Yes, it does take a bit of time to begin with, but once you've got it there, it's doing the work for you because remember, this is the passive part of looking. So you're not actively looking all the time, but it's kind of doing the work for you without you realizing. OK, so this is the first thing I would recommend you do. And if you haven't watched that video of mine before, go back and watch about how to really optimize your profile. OK, the second thing, if you remember, I said, if you're passively looking, you can tell recruiters you're looking on your profile. here. Can you see it says I am? I'm going to click on that and I'm looking for a job. I click on here. It's got my details. It's going to come up so I can say what kind of job I'm looking for, location, you know, et cetera whether I could start immediately or not, but also and the different types of employment I'm looking for. This is the important part. I get to decide whether only recruiters get to know that I'm looking or everyone on LinkedIn can know. And the way that everyone on LinkedIn can know, can you see there's my banner, my picture here, they put a little banner here that says open to work, okay? So that just, again, for a recruiter, it says I'm open to work. They get to know straight away. The benefit of this, if all LinkedIn members know, is say there's, somebody you know who's not a recruiter but they just happen to work in an organization and they've heard there's a job opening they might be like oh god I remember just seeing on Lucy's profile that she's open to work oh she'd be great for this job that's where it's really beneficial obviously a lot of the time when we're looking for our next job we might already be in employment so that's not possible we don't want to broadcast to the world that we're looking that's when the recruiter's only options better however I must just let you know if you work in an organization where maybe you've got an HR department or there's somebody who's dedicated to resourcing, if they also use LinkedIn Recruiter, which is the kind of, there's different um, payment packages within LinkedIn. Obviously we're using the free version. Recruiters have a paid version called LinkedIn Recruiter where they get these extra benefits and they can find people. If you've got somebody within your organization using LinkedIn Recruiter, there's nothing to stop you coming up in their search. So they would then know you're looking. So you just have to be mindful that it's not totally anonymous um, because you could come up on somebody's search if they use LinkedIn Recruiter. But that is how you would say you're open to work. Okay, and then the third bit, the third part of your passively looking is ultimately use LinkedIn. So share things. So if you look here on my activity, you see here my activity, it says things about the posts I've done here, 
You can also see when I've put comments on other people's posts. It might show um, anything I've shared, anything I've liked. So again, if I'm a recruiter, I can look at your activity. It might be like, she's done nothing at all. I doesn't, it's not the end of the world, but it doesn't look great to show that you're not on there at all. So even if you don't feel confident posting yet your own content, start to go on LinkedIn, go on your homepage, like I am here, you can see everything that comes up here, comment on people's posts, that sounds great, it looks like you had a great time there, that's really interesting, or you might like it, or you might even share it, so if you want to share it with your, you see here, repost, so again, I can repost, repost it on my page, either with my own thoughts, or just repost it with nothing, I don't add any comment, but if I put it in my thoughts, I'm like, hey guys, you've got to check out, this is Fig Tree HR, this is a lady I know has got her own HR business. It's fantastic. So I might want to say, hey, guys, you've got to check out what Sarah's doing in HR. It's brilliant. So that goes out to my network. And then it really helps Sarah get her name out there. And it's reciprocal. OK, so this is how you use LinkedIn. OK, and then hopefully you can build up and start to put your own content out there. And it hasn't always got to be about work. You might want to put a post about the end of the holidays and how you're feeling. You might want to put a post about coming into autumn. You can choose whatever you want to post about, but just start using LinkedIn and start to actually be visible on there. Because like I said, if we go into my profile, a recruiter can come in and really quickly look at your activity by just scrolling down and actually seeing what you've been posting or what you've been talking about when they come into your activity here. Okay, so that is how we make sure we are posting on there. So finally, the third part when we're looking and how we can use LinkedIn strategically is when we're playing the long game. So we're not looking now, we're not even looking in the next six months, but we want to make sure we're just keeping on top of what's out there. Or maybe we know in the next year or two, our circumstances might change, or we're thinking about changing careers, etc. OK, so the things you can do when you're thinking more for the long game. Remember I said to you, it's about finding people, connecting, networking. So again, finding people, you might know their name and you can just type it straight in here. So I was with my husband again. So Andrew Clementson, and I can just click straight on him and I can ask to connect with him. OK. I don't think it's going to show me here. So if you see here, it's got the blue message. If we weren't connected, that message would say connect and I can choose to connect with him. What it might then do is bring up other carpenters and I can choose to connect with them by clicking here. OK, so we go from being a third connection to a first connection. They have to accept. You can, again, this is in my video before, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. You can put a note with your connection. Personally, I don't. I think it's a bit strange because you wouldn't do that if you're just meeting somebody on the street. Um, but hey, everyone's different. But that would be my recommendation. Just ask if you can connect. They're going to decide whether they want to or not. And also your inbox can get really clogged up with lots of people putting loads of uh, messages on there as well. The other thing, Jimbo said to you about first connections. Actually, I'm just going to go into my husband's profile again. First connection. So what I can do, you can click on the person you know, and you can filter it. So I can here see all his connections. Can you see it bring up his connections? And I can click on those connections and filter it to only see his first connections, okay? And it'll bring up everyone. And what can happen is a lot of his first connections, <laughs> my first connections, maybe for someone else, I don't want to use other people for this, but you can then, where it says message, it'll say connect, okay? So I'm looking at his first connections and they're not my first connection. I get the opportunity to connect directly with them. So again, they're more likely to maybe connect with me because we have Andrew in common. OK, so that's another way you can go out there. And you can start to meet people. Another way is you might remember I said I wanted to be an HR assistant when I was looking for my job. So another way is when I'm looking for people, it's going to bring up all the different people that are HR assistants. OK, not through Andrew, though. So let me come off that and go back into my network. OK, so you go into your network and you type in HR assistant. It's going to let me. Okay, just whilst it's loading, so I type in the job title and then again I might filter it. So here we go, HR assistant, and it can bring up loads of different HR assistant people. And maybe it's so can you see here? This is a person here, she's a second connection, so I can ask to connect with her. Okay, so I literally do that and I send and we I've asked to connect. So that's another way you can do it through the job title. I want to know other HR assistants, etc. Um 
you can also then through this way, you say if Natal Natalia accepts, I might then get in touch with her, I can message her and say, hey, you know, I looked at your profile, we've got a lot in common, I really want to get into HR assistant role, if you ever have time for coffee, I can see you in Cardiff, would you have 10 minutes, we could do it over LinkedIn, or we could do it in person, but I can get to know her first and then ask, you know, so it's another way of meeting people as well. Another thing you can do, like I said, you can use LinkedIn for networking. So again, you might even just type in networking in Wales, I'm in Wales, put it in for your location and see what comes up. It might be networking HR because I want to get into HR. So again, you can use this in so many different ways. And it might bring up people who are involved in networking. It might bring up posts where people are talking about, hey, we network in Wales. Okay, so this is another way you can start to find about networking in your area. So just to recap, we've got three ways that we're looking for our next job, whether you're actively looking, whether you're more passively looking or whether you're playing the long game, LinkedIn is there to help you with all those different ways, okay? Whether it's immediate, medium or longer term. So make sure, I, my main advice would be with LinkedIn, don't be scared, just get started. Just start to look on your homepage, start to connect with people, start to like and comment and share, get your profile to a place where you're really happy with it. And don't forget, it's going to evolve with you. You know, mine's still evolving. I'm st like I said, I only recently saw all these skills that were listed that were nothing to do with what I do anymore. So it's an evolving document almost and profiles. Just take your time with it. There's no, it's never going to be exactly perfect because it evolves as you evolve. So just get started. Start to put some information on there, on your profile that's relevant just take, depending on what part of the stage you're at, whether you're actively looking, passively looking, playing the long game, take on board what I've shared today. And if you've got any questions at all, do not hesitate to get in touch. I'm going to put my contact details with this video um, as well. So feel free to get in touch and I'll be happy to answer those for you. Okay, so thanks for joining me.